What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have some more stuff that we want to go ahead and talk to you about. We have some increased model forecasts potentially for the Caribbean Sea and the Lesser Antilles threats that I've been paying attention to. You've seen the thumbnail. I'll go ahead and talk about those. Quick update on Invest 93L. It's about to make landfall. It's not developing. It's not going to happen. The NHC's already just crashed the probability chance of this thing organizing and developing. So that's not going to uh, going to happen or anything like that. But I am going to be starting to pivot my focus less towards that and more towards the potential threat in the Caribbean Sea and in the Lesser Antilles for late June because that's what I'm potentially looking at as our classic June setup. So let's go ahead and jump right into it right here and right now. We're going to go ahead and start with this right here. Once again, we have a 20% chance formation right uh, right there. Disorganized showers and thunderstorms are about 20 miles southeast of La, Plasca, uh, La Pesca New Me uh, in Mexico. The low is expected to move inland. Chance of development's not going to happen. Localized flooding, though, is going to be very possible, though primarily due to the fact that it's going to be essentially going over the same areas as Alberto. And that's just something I'm just very concerned about. So we'll have to pay very close attention to that. But overall, the threat for tropical uh, storm developments is passed. It's not going to happen at this point, at least with Invest 93L. We had Alberto with that little bit of a flare-up of tropical storm uh, activity right there. But that's about it for now. And now we're going to gonna go ahead and move on to other parts of the Atlantic that need to be uh, kind of taken more seriously. We have something potentially going to organize and develop in the Caribbean, potentially off of the gyre. And we're also looking at something in the deep tropics with the main development region, which is going to be pretty interesting considering the conditions. And we'll talk about those as well in just a second. But I'm just paying attention to a couple more threats that could be happening later in June or early in July. July. So we're going to pay attention to those. But before we get into those, we're going to go ahead and start with the potential conditions that I am looking at right here. So let's start with the global sea temperatures. We know the water's warm. We're up to 28, 29, 30 degrees Celsius across much of the Caribbean and much of the main development region. We already know this. It's kind of like me saying this like a broken record. But the reason I emphasize this so much is is because it, this is a situation where, no, the water didn't cool off last winter. The waters just stayed where they were for the for much of the, month, uh, of the winter, and now we're seeing that warm-up period. And we're going to see a situation, most likely, in the next month or so, where we're going to see 30, maybe even as high as 32-plus degrees Celsius waters across much of the Caribbean Sea right there. And it's something you need to take very, very seriously right here because that, what that does is it adds more uh, fuel for potential hurricanes to develop because we didn't have really anything go into the Caribbean Sea last year and that was my main concern uh, concern because uh, of that because just the waters are just going to we're going to stay as they were and they pretty much did and it caused this whole thing to flare up this is ocean heat content or OHC essentially it's a measurement of how hot the water is and how deep that hot water goes down so overall what we're seeing with the OHC, this is the month of June. This isn't like August or anything like that. This is June. And what we're seeing is OHC values exceeding 150 to 175 in a lot of air parts of air, the Caribbean Sea. Over here, we're seeing 125 to 150 with the loop current in the Gulf of Mexico right here. And even the western half, the main development region, we're cracking 125 OHC, which I didn't even see this in the month of June last year. I actually want to go ahead and check this real quickly. We're going to go ahead and go to 2023, and we're going to go ahead and go to pretty much June 23rd of last year, just to kind of uh, compare and contrast right here. This is June 23rd. Yeah, we weren't even seeing as much uh, OHC across a lot of these areas right here. It wasn't as concentrated either, and we didn't see as thick of a Gulf Stream area as we did before either, which I think is pretty interesting. It's kind of pivoting back to where we, we are now. So this is, tw uh, this is where we're at in 2024, right now here's what we got yeah look at the difference 
this has definitely gone up. This has become a lot more concentrated, and we're definitely seeing that OHC continue to push further and further to the north, which could allow for tropical cyclones to organize and develop further and further to the north, which could pose a threat later down the season, especially for the Carolinas and other areas like that that do are, are susceptible to Cape Verde hurricanes. So that's something to pay attention to right there as we continue to go into this. Next thing we're showing you is the wind shear. This is the wind shear that we have pulled up for you right here. Wind shear is going to kind of be fluctuating off and on, off and on. Right now, we have a, a lot of wind shear across much of the Caribbean Sea and the main development region. I expect that to fluctuate off and on, off and on, off and on for the next month or so. I'd say around late July is when we're going to see that wind shear just collapse. And from then on out, it's just the Sahara dust. And then looking at the dry air, we can go ahead and show you that with the water vapor imagery right there. There is quite a bit of dry air in the main development region right now. That's a lot of Sahara dust over there. There's also some dry air going on around Bermuda, that region, as well as the northern half of the Gulf of Mexico and parts of the Caribbean Sea over there. Although we are seeing active periods of moistening up here, and especially in the eastern main development region over here, as well as parts of the intertropical convergence zone. So we'll have to pay close attention to that as that continues to push further and further up to the north. And matter of fact, I want to go ahead and check uh, one of the uh, the climate models real quickly. I want to see what the uh, I want to see what the NMME is checking on right here. This is what the NMME is looking at. I want to see what they're calling for when it comes to uh, precipitation, everything like that. Calling for a very active uh, June right here when it comes to um, ITCC development. Then the month of July, things really start to ramp up. And this isn't too far from here where we see pretty much a lot more precip and a lot more moisture than average across a lot of these areas. Advocating for now for a rather active main development region right there, which is going to be very interesting because considering how the Sahara dust acts and the Sahara uh, hair, an air layer kind of just penetrates, it's going to really depend on if this thing can go get going sooner rather than later. I want to see what the CFS Weekly is going for as well. Yeah, CFS Weekly is really going off the charts in the main development region. This is what we have for July, uh, week of July 7th. We are going to be seeing fluctuations with the moisture and everything like that, but that's uh, kind of typical of how this goes. And this is what we have for July. We're seeing a an, uh, an more active main development region, although it's going to be a bit drier down here according to this in, uh, the, in this part of the Atlantic right there, although the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico remain pretty moist, so that's something to pay attention to, but looking further, uh, more or less, into the short term, I want to show you the shear forecast and the moisture forecast for both these systems right here. We're going to start with the European using the 0Z, just mainly because that's uh, that goes the furthest out, and the 0 and 12Z models always are the most reliable when it comes to this, so here's the shear forecast that we have for you pulled up right here. The shear forecast has kind of, once again, that fluctuation, although in the eastern half of the main development region, you do start to see that shear start to break off, and you allow and allows for a more stable environment. Well, not more stable, but a more favorable environment as this thing uh, uh, happens right there. Let's go ahead and go out to five days out to kind of get a gauge of what we're looking at. Yeah, we're seeing a bit of a decrease of wind shear in the Caribbean Sea compared to what we are seeing right here. We're about 25 to 30 knots. This is advocating for about, I'd say, 25 uh, knots or 20 to 25 knots or so so we're going to see a bit of a slight reduction with this but main development region starts to op uh, open up a little bit for business right here at least shear wise we'll check the moisture and the sahara dust uh, and see how that uh, cross checks and all that and then going out to about a week out, what we're seeing is a bit of a decrease of wind shear in the eastern half of the Caribbean Sea right there. Again, this is going to fluctuate, as well as parts of the Atlantic Basin over here and much of the Gulf of Mexico. And the main development region typically is just going to continue to fluctuate right there. It's going to have periods of high wind shear and periods of low wind shear for much of the summer until we get to late July. That's when things start to open up, and that's when the Sahara dust will start to be the only factor. And that... Uh, dying down will really depend on what will happen going forward. Let's go ahead and show you the moisture forecast with this right here. This is the, uh, the moisture with the relative humidity right here. This is the European that we have pulled up for you. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at this very quickly. Uh, moisture forecast, yeah, there's a quite a bit of Sahara dust that's going to be suppressing at least short-term activity for much of the main development region right here. Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico, it's going to be a mix of moist and dry air, at least for the time being. Yeah, this this is Sahara dust. You're not going to see much tropical development with this, although you might see some active periods of more moisture right there. 
uh, right here happening if it can kind of stay in one of those moisture pockets. Sahara dust is really starting to tr uh, intrude down there. So essentially what I'm seeing with this is either A, it's going to organize and develop in one of those moist pockets that the tropical wave allows for, or B, it's just going to get killed off by a tropical uh, by the Sahara dust right there, which personally, based on some of the weather nerds uh, ensembles, that are starting to pick up on this. They think A is more likely the latter, but we'll have to pay close attention to that, and we'll go ahead and show you those right here. This is what we have for uh, the European mo uh, model ensemble right here. I'm pretty sure you guys can see this enough so we don't have to move anything, but this is what we have right uh, right here for much of these air, uh, areas. They're showing inc an increasing amount of ensembles forecasting uh, something happening. Let's go ahead and show you what we were looking at 12Z yesterday in comparison. Yeah, we were seeing uh, quite a few le a few less models uh, ensembles uh, having this thing organizing and developing at the 12z if we go ahead and show you the comparison to the 0z right here was it show right here boom a lot more scenarios of tropical cyclones we're looking at potentially 15 to 20 uh, ensembles right there the operational models haven't picked up on this quite yet but the ensembles are really ramping up and say hey you got to pay attention to this this looks like a potential thing that will organize and develop and i'm also paying attention to the caribbean as well as because the european isn't posing this as much of a threat but the gfs ensembles have and we'll also pull up the canadian ensembles as well to kind of see what they're cross-checking with all this and we'll see which one leans between uh, the two of them so this is what we have going on let's go ahead and show you the gfs ensembles right here we're going to go ahead and show you the zero z right here and then we're going to show you the 12 z which i think is going to be a pretty interesting uptick right here Here's the 0Z ensembles for the GFS. Increased activity in parts of the Western Caribbean Sea over here. Not as much activity across much of the main development region in the Lesser Antilles, but this has been a breaking news situation, and this has been a, quite a bit of an uptick from recently. This is where we're at about 10 days out for all of this, just to keep in, uh, keep in mind. By July 3rd, we're seeing quite a lot of ensembles organizing and developing stuff out here. Maybe another 20, 25 ensembles having something organized and developed. Although some of it having too close to Venezuela and uh, Venez uh, Venezuela and those areas right there are too far south. A lot of them kind of make a close call to Trinidad and Tobago and parts of the Windward Islands right there, which I think is pretty interesting as the other one, which is the European forecast, has this thing kind of a little bit further to the north near the... Uh, near like Guadalupe, Do uh, Dominica, those areas right there. I just thought it was kind of interesting how this is, uh, whole thing was laid out. We can go ahead and show you the uh, the GFS for the tw uh, 12Z. Actually, never mind. We ha have that for you. Let's go ahead and show you the forecast hour just once again to kind of illustrate what we're looking at. Also looking for increased potential activity uh, using the gyre across much of Central America and the Western Caribbean, although it is forecasting us to stay kind of close to shore and everything like that. Not much of a development probability, at least right now now but i have seen some other model cycles that have something potentially organizing and developing so that's going to be something to pay very close attention to as we get more data and as we get more information for you guys and i'll keep you updated on all of that let's go ahead and show you the operational models to kind of wrap this up in a nice little bow as well as actually no before we get into that i want to show the canadian ensembles because i want to see what they're thinking with this right here on tropical tidbits unfortunately weather nerds doesn't have the cmc's ensembles right there uh, i wish they did otherwise this would be a lot simpler and i can just show you that but here's what we have the canadian ensembles right here canadian ensembles are pretty interesting they want something to organize and develop and the Caribbean in the next five days or so, and that's that Caribbean threat I was kind of highlighting right there. A lot of them want to get up to strong tropical storm or maybe weak hurricane strength, but granted what we were seeing with the wind shear and the moisture and all that, I mean, moisture is definitely there. Wind shear is a bit high for that, in my opinion. Obviously, it's not obviously the wind shear is not uh, not is going to inhibit developing and it's not going to help it at, uh, at all. But overall, if these Canadian ensembles are true and everything like that, this could potentially be a big situation going on. Canadian ensembles also want something to happen in the Lesser Antilles as well, as well as potentially in the Dominican Republic and Haiti as well, having a strong Azores high. That will allow for this thing to push far enough to potentially impact the Antilles over here. Although some of these ensembles that have the Caribbean system have this thing once again impacting parts of Texas or Mexico right there. So something to pay attention to. But overall, I'm taking this with a grain of salt because A, it's this far out. B, no other model really has this scenario. And C, 
and none of the operational forecasts show that. Matter of fact, we can go ahead and show you the Canadian operational just to show you what it has in comparison right here. This is what we have right here. This uh, We have this uh, tropical wave right here in the Lesser Antilles, potentially trying to organize and develop, but again, it's battling some dry air. The wind shear is not going to be as much of an issue as much of the dry air. Although the Canadian does want uh, something organizing and developing once again the Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche over there which if that were to happen that would be an absolute flooding disaster but nothing more than that like maybe winds of up to like 50 to 60 miles per hour or so but that's what the Canadian model is wanting. Overall, none of the operational models really want much happening. I can understand why, because of this hair, uh, hair of dust impact and everything like that, but a lot of ensembles have been picking up on it, and that's why I'm covering it today, because whenever the ensembles start picking up on stuff, the operational stuff usually follows a couple days afterward, and it's something that you need to pay attention to as a forecaster, just because you need, an you need a good aggregate of what the forecasts are potentially looking at to form your own opinion and give, my, uh, give as much information as you can european doesn't have much activity going on in the next 10 days according to this gfs we can go ahead and show you that yeah not much activity hap uh, happening unless you're in the antilles or the caribbean gfs does want something to organize in the uh, in the caribbean and into the bay of campeche again and they're also looking at a potential closed low in the lesser antilles according to their operational run but it's weaker than the ensembles and again it's going to take a little while to catch up and i completely understand why gfs actually does not have a realistic unrealistic scenario about 384 hours out so i'm really uh, shout out to them for that next model we're showing you is the nav gem right here nav gem has this thing or uh, has something organizing and developing potentially over here in the uh, in the gulf of mexico right there although it is a bit far out to kind of tell what's going on not much is going on with the nav gem last one we can show you is the icon right here the yeah, icon pretty iconic for keeping a more of a northward bias showing not much of a, a situation where we have much tropical development once again ensembles are one thing operational or another it takes a, a few a few days for the op operational to catch up with the ensembles we saw this last hurricane season we thought saw this in 2022 we saw this in 2021 to some extent as well and this is all stuff we are going to continue to keep you updated here on the pat's path predictor channel now before we go i do have a quick announcement for you uh for you guys if you guys saw my community poll a lot of you wanted a, a, a live stream a weekly live stream that's going to be uh, potentially happening i'm planning to schedule my first live stream on tuesday night around 7 p.m central time 8 p.m eastern time just in case the nhc comes out with something that's going uh, that may be going on with the tropics right there i just want to cover tropics for about an hour i saw david schlauhauer and weather center nazario doing it i figured hey why don't we try to get all both those guys together and why don't we do a, a huge collab stream i've talked to david about it i'm trying to get him on board with it i'm talking to weather center nazario he might he's also pretty interested in it so i'm hoping to uh, have something going on with that as we get more information We'll close the video out with this right here. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Remember, we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by July 17th. That is my 21st birthday. So if we can get that milestone in the next 24 days, that would be very exciting to do. And it would really motivate me to keep doing this for you guys. And this is something I've been I've wanted to do for quite a while now. So I ple uh, please be sure to subscribe and, le and just let me and just encourage me to keep doing this. I'm also going to be making some new documentaries this week. They're going to be bangers. I really hope you guys check them out. Be sure to leave a like on the video as well. Remember, the goal with this channel, as always, is to get more people engaged with weather. And if you want to come hang out with us or just kind of see the behind the scenes of these forecasts that we are sh show you right here, be sure to join the Storms United Discord server. Link to that is right over there. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.